Hey guys, Nano Cube update week 24. Let's go into the tank. Um, let's see. Um, just kind of getting sucker punched by the whole thing this week. Uh, we'll start out with these beautiful pallies that are doing great regardless of anything else going on in the tank. Um, I treated with fluconazole. It looks like all the bryopsis is gone in both tanks. Um, it's only seven days in. At the end of 14 days, if any reappears, I will treat again. I lost most of the footage that I had in the beginning when it was really bad. So I was going to make a video on fluconazole and bryopsis, but yeah, I might throw something together anyway, but it really doesn't show the furry rocks in the other tank <laughs> for a starting point. So we'll see. Then I had uh, decided, still battling with my zoanthid problem, and this goes on before I put fluconazole in the tank. I'm dipping them in Furon 2, and they are all out of this tank. I'll show them to you. They're all on a frag rack in the other tank. So, I beat the Bryopsis. I'm working on the zoanthids, but uh, now I'm dealing with stuff like this. So that nice little green bird's nest there is really bleaching out. There's still a few polyps on it, but not what it should be. Digitata's okay. It's not happy. Uh, Jedi Mind Trick. Couple polyps around the edge. It's not even the right color. So I'm changing my salt to reef crystals after yeah telling everybody how great red sea coral pro was i've decided that maybe it's a little too potent for my little cube tank um comes down to water chemistry i believe you know i'm keeping my hardness at around nine for example and that stuff mixes up with a hardness of 12 and up so the one time that I was adding the water, I usually pour it slowly into the back, let the pump mix it with some of the tank water. Um, one time I decided to pour it right in. That's what happened. There used to be a nice stylo right there. You know, the stylo's gone. That's that little nib right behind this, Pasilopora. Pasilopora's kind of doing the same thing, but really slowly. It has a lot of polyps on it, but it has that white tip. It's kind of white around the back, so that's not doing great. As you can see, this, this mackerel algae coming out of the rock is really growing. But So, yes, some things are doing well, some things are not. Here's my pink bird's nest. It has a lot of white on the tips. So, again, um, not doing well. Sunset Montipora is fine, although it may look white, whiter at the top due to the lighting. It is not. It is pretty much a uniform color of what you see on the bottom with all the green polyps. It's just the lighting kind of washes it out. So I moved the mushroom over here and a couple of things because it was looking kind of bare. <laughs> this mushroom here. I remember the one wasn't getting much light. We'll see if we can bring him back by giving him a nice full light. And that mushroom there. Uh, things on the top, like that Pacillopora and that Pagoda, are fine. Green star polyps still going strong. Uh, I also moved out one of the red macro algaes to the other tank. Um, this is just a little piece of it here. But the other larger piece is getting like a... At first I thought it was a um, cyano, but it is some kind of slime covering it. And it may be due to the fluconazole. Or it may be cyano breaking down because of the fluconazole. But whatever it is, I just threw it into the other tank 
because I have lots of pods in there and uh, they'll make short work of cleaning it up hopefully <laughs> so yes we're gonna let this tank sit for a while without zoanthids in it and uh, how long I don't know yet but the other tank inhabitants are hanging in there so really my problem is the sticks and the zoos fish are great by the way these guys are always just ready to eat looking for food um, of course my Ras and goby do a little hiding game whenever the camera's out I am getting some of the dusters back on this rock uh, looks like maybe they shed their crowns from being picked at by something but at least they're not all gone and I have that this one just keeps getting bigger and he just came out of nowhere great thing about hitchhikers okay let's move over to this other tank and I'll take the filter away because it's got a whole different lighting setup here's the zoanthids on a frag rack after the second dip in Furon 2 yeah, the toxic green Kool-Aid um, these guys right here they are new since the problem started um, this one right in the center here would come out on and off there's a big suction cup in there. This is what I did. I took an old suction cup and just floated a frag rack in there. But it's one of those good suction cups with the lever, lever so it's not going anywhere. Um, I didn't want to put these back in the tank due to the way I was treating them with the Furon. Because I, some of these are on pieces of live rock. And I don't, the medicine gets into live rock. I don't need it bleaching out in my main display or leaching out. Here's another live rock. These were hit or miss. It seems to have helped this colony. Those are doing all right. Um, that in the middle there is one of those uh, purple encrusting Montiporas that just bleached out in the tank as well. The colony in the back got one wide open and the rest are all slammed shut. And that was my favorite one there with the greens and reds. And that's all slammed shut. Got one trying. So we'll see. It's a four day thing. I'm sure the um, Furon stresses them somewhat. So I'll go through it and see what happens. Here's that red macroalgae with all this white kind of webbing all over it. Like I said, I think it was cyano that broke down from the fluconazole. Well. Yes, multiple treatments at the same time. Um, so you don't know what to really expect from one and the other. So I'm dipping them into one medication and then adding them, putting them back into a tank that has a totally different medication in it and treating different things at different times. So who knows? Uh, let's see, back in here. Where's my little free green star polyps? Can't, can't tell. I know they're in there somewhere. Oh, is that them? <laughs> All righty. Yeah, I can't find my way around my own tank through the camera. It's because I'm so zoomed in. Let's try this. Okay. They should be right there. There we go. Free green star polyps. Or clove polyps. Or who knows. Um, I don't know. Just showed up one day. We'll see how they, how they come about. And then on this Tonga branch, I noticed something too. I don't know if this is even going to focus in. Please focus on that. Yeah, I guess it doesn't work that way. Come out a little bit. 
Just another weird free critter in the tank that it's not going to let me take a picture of. Well, it's got a red body and it's got a lot of clear tentacles, almost like a small rock anemone, and they have white tips. So it's kind of hard to see. Um, sometimes pictures are better than video. But it's another cool thing. I'll let y'all keep you guys posted. I was took, got rid of the decorator crab, and I was trying to clean up after him. I took a lot of these pieces of codium that were just floating around and glued them onto rocks. Give them a chance to grow. If they turn into black nubs, I'll pull them off and throw them away. And if they grow, maybe I'll have some codium macroalgae to give out. You know, it's really good for a refugium, I think. Um, not if you're just running Chato and exporting it that way, which is fine. But if you want to have more of a display refugium, it might be something you're interested in. And I think it branches off pretty well for, say, like seahorses, too. As you see there, it's blowing in the in the current, but it does get quite long. So it'll make a good seahorse anchors or hitching posts. <laughs> all right, guys, uh, that's about all I want to ramble on about my tank this week. Uh, if you have any questions, you can leave them down in the comments. And uh, yeah, I'm getting a little growth back on the macroalgae, so. Thanks for watching, and uh, hit the like button. Like I said, leave a comment, and I'll see you guys next week.